Hello everyone, this is Marissa Redenbaugh, your Juvenile Services Librarian. I'm here today to read you some books about our theme for this week, which is nursery rhymes. Once I'm done reading your books, which I hope you enjoy, Rachel will come on and she will tell you all about our craft for this week that you can either pick up curbside or print from, down, from, from our online website. First up is There Was an Old Woman Who Lived in a Shoe by Jane Cabrera. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children and animals too. Bertha, Martha, Skye, and Bob. Eric, Edith, Esme, and Pob. John, Jane, Jack, and Jill. Kai, Rosa, and Baby Bill. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. And when the children were hungry, she made them a stew with potatoes and coconut and carrots and peas. And she kissed them all lovingly when they said, more please. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. And when the car broke down, they wrote a new. They all held tight, sitting side by side, and she kissed them all lovingly at the end of the ride. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe, and when the clothes got tatty, she'd mend and make do. What fabulous clothes, such colorful cloth, and she kissed them all lovingly when they showed them off. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe, and when the furniture broke, she stuck it with glue and hammered and nailed and screwed here and there. And she kissed them all lovingly from her wobbly chair. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe and some days were just a big hullabaloo. So much noise, what a messy muddle. But all was made better by a big Soft cuddle. I love you. Well, that old woman certainly did love all of her children and animals, didn't she? Next up, we have a book called Little Roja Riding Hood by Susan Middlety Ilya, illustrated by Susan Guevara. And this was actually on, nominated for the Pira Bell Prey Award. So that's what this little silver medal is. And this one, you'll hear some words that you might not recognize, and those words are Spanish words. But I think you'll still understand and maybe even learn some new vocabulary. There once was a niña who lived near the woods. She liked to wear colorful capas with hoods. Roja, called mom from her telenovelas. Go through the woods till you get to abuelas. She has a bad cough, so take her the sopa. It's muy caliente. Don't spill on tu ropa. Be safe in al bosque, mama warned her child. Be careful of anything furry or wild. Si, sí, said la niña, who left with her basket. Then from a tree came a question. Who asked it? Where are you going in your capa so red? To see mi abuela, Red suspiciously said. Then a large wolf appeared. Look at these flores. Surely your grandma would love los colores. Hmm, since she's sick, some flowers are good. She set down her basket, her capa and hood. While Roja picked blossoms, the wolf sidled off, complete with the skies to inspect grandma's cough. In Cape and Capucha, he reached La Casita and knocked on the door of the sick abuelita. Abue, he said in a high squeaky voice, I'm sorry to hear of your terrible toss. Roja, come in. Oh, what a surprise. She noticed at once the size of Wolf's eyes. Tus ojos, she said, so grande the pair. The better to see you. He sat in her chair. 
tus orejas, she said, so furry and dark. The better to hear you, was Wolf's quick remark. Then Roja walked up with her lovely bouquet. Somewhere she'd misplaced her kappa that day. She peeked in the window and saw her red hood and inside it, <gasps> Lobo, caramba, not good. Tus dientes, said Grandma, as pointy as daggers. The better to eat you, said Wolf with a swagger. Just then little Roja burst in through the door. And Grandma, no need to play dumb anymore. I won't be your lunch, said Gran. Phony nieta. Some soup, Wolf, said Roja. My mom's best receta. She swung la canasta and out flew the soup. Too hot for Lobo, who soon flew the coop. Ay, caliente, Wolf said as he ran. You saved me, said Grandma, but I need a plan. To keep yourself safe? Of course, no problema. They shopped for a lock and a security sistema. And now when folks knock for whatever raison, Abuela's reply is the same set in stone. Just come, let me see you, and then she'll unlock it. Of course, Little Red keeps a phone in her pocket. When traveling through woods, she's muy valiente and never leaves home without soup caliente. Well, it looked like those girls learned a very good lesson and the wolf did not get away. All right, the next book we have to read is called Little Bo Peep and Her Bad Bad Sheep, A Mother Goose Hullabaloo by A. L. Wegworth and Luke Flowers. Little Bo Peep. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep. Come back. Ring around the rosy. I'll be back soon. <gasps> Look, there's the little old woman in her shoe. We heard about them earlier. <clears throat> little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. <gasps> oh dear, where have my darlings run off to? Come and get them. Excuse me. I left them alone while they find their way home. Off to the market you go. Bzz, bzz. Beg your pardon, I'm trying to recite a nursery rhyme here. My dear little lamb's always getting into jams. How much for this little piggy? Do you know the muffin man? Let me taste your ware. Ware? Bzz, bzz, bzz. Shoe fly, have you any wool? What's all that hullabaloo? Looks like those kittens need a talking to. What a good boy I am. Tweedledee dee, tweedledee, tweedledee, tweedle -dee, twee. Bzz, bzz, here fly. Please, porridge hot peas, porridge cold. As I was saying, Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. Here, boy! Loo, loo, skip to my loo. What a great fall! Why, I oughta. Don't crack up, dear. Does anybody want to hear this nursery rhyme? Where, oh, where has my little dog gone? Flies in the buttermilk, shoe, fly, shoe. Shoe! Oh, that reminds me. Danger looks here and there. My poor sheep are unaware. Seriously, if you'll just listen. I can't see anything in this mess. Going by foot may be best. Hello, miss. Ah, cough it up. Fly. I lost my partner. What'll I do? Come back, Lou. Bing, 
no. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, Mother Goose, my sheep are on the loose. Pop goes the weasel. Pop what? Buzz, buzz, ew. Ah, meow, meow. Oh my goodness, look at all this noise. Buzz, buzz, you crooked sheep. Hang in there. Wah, wah. Hey, that's my babies. Delicious, devious. Ah, it's nearly eight o'clock. Bingo, hickory dickory duck. Whoa, aho, Jack. Wait, yeah, yeehaw, yickies. Row, row, row your boat. Wow, that's a big mess. What do you think happens? As I was trying to say, leave them alone and they'll come home wagging their tails behind them. Oh, my sweets, bad sheep. Can we have our pie now? Home again, home again, jiggity jig. I do, I do, I do, Wee! Whew. I think we're gonna make it. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. Leave them alone and they'll come home wagging their tails behind them. My sincerest apologies for the interruptions. How could I get a word in with all that hullabaloo? These are all the characters we saw from other storied nursery rhymes in this book. Well, that sure was a noisy book, wasn't it? I liked it though. The next one is going to be a little calmer and maybe with some nursery rhymes you're a little bit more familiar with. This one is called The People of the Town, Nursery Rhyme Friends for You and Me. It's selected and illustrated by Alan Marks. And you notice it said selected and not written by. It's because he's not the original author, but he's the one who put this book together. And these are the ones that he chose out of all the nursery rhymes that have been published. Gregory Griggs, Gregory Griggs had 27 different wigs. He wore them up, he wore them down to please the people of the town. He wore them east, he wore them west, but he could never tell which he loved the best. One misty, moisty morning when the cloudy was the weather, there I met an old man clothed in all leather. Clothed in all leather with a cap under his chin, how do you do and how do you do? And how do you do again? It's raining, it's pouring, the old man is snoring. He went to bed and bumped his head and couldn't get up in the morning. I hope that doesn't happen to you. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. It followed her to school one day, which was against the rule. It made the children laugh and play to see a lamb at school. And so the teacher, it turned out, still it lingered near and waited patiently about till Mary did appear. Why does the lamb love Mary so, the eager children cry? Why, Mary loves the lamb, you know, the teacher did reply. Oh, the grand old Duke of York had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. And when they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. Dr. Foster went to Gloucester in a shower of rain. He stepped in a puddle right up to his middle and never went there again. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? There was a crooked man, and he walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence upon a crooked stile. He bought a crooked cat, which caught a crooked mouse, and they all lived together in a little crooked house. 
Oh, this one we already heard, but it was a little messed up. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. Leave them alone and they'll come home, bringing their tails behind them. Little Bo Peep fell fast asleep and dreamt she heard them bleeding. But when she awoke, she found it a joke, for they were still a fleeting. Then she took up her crook, determined to find them. She found them indeed, but it made her heart bleed, for they'd left their tails behind them. It happened one day as Bo Peep did stray into a meadow hard by. There she espied their tails side by side, all hung on a tree to dry. She heaved a sigh and wiped her eye, and over the hillock she raced, and tried what she could, as a shepherdess should, that each tail be properly placed. Rub-a-dub-dub, three men in a tub, and who do you think they be? The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Turn them out, knaves, all three. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. Then up Jack got and home did trot as fast as he could caper, and went to bed to mend his head with vinegar and brown paper. Little Polly Flinders sat among the cinders, warming her pretty little toes. Her mother came and caught her and scolded her little daughter for spoiling her nice new clothes. Sally go round the sun, Sally go round the moon, Sally go round the chimney pots on a Saturday afternoon. Polly put the kettle on, Polly put the kettle on, Polly put the kettle on, we'll all have tea. Suki, take it off again. Suki, take it off again. Suki, take it off again. They've all gone away. Little Jack Horner sat in a corner eating a Christmas pie. He put in his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, What a good boy am I. Jerry Hall, he is so small. A rat could eat him, hat and all. Bye, baby bunting, daddy's gone a-hunting. Gone to get a little rabbit skin to wrap the baby bunting in. Elizabeth, Elspeth, Betty, and Bess all went together to seek a bird's nest. They found a bird's nest with five eggs in. They all took one and left four in. Little Tommy Tucker sings for his supper. What shall we give him but white bread and butter? How shall he cut it without a knife? How shall he marry without a wife? There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread. She kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Well, that was a little different than our first book, wasn't it? Wee Willy Winky runs through the town, upstairs and downstairs in his nightgown. Tapping at the window and crying through the lock, are all the children in their beds? It's past eight o'clock. Georgie Porgy, pudding and pie, kissed the girls and made them cry. When the boys came out to play, Georgie Porgy ran away. To make your candles last for I, you wives and maids give Eero. Put them out's the only way, says honest John Boldero. To bed, to bed, says Sleepyhead. Terry a while, says Slow. Put on the pan, says Greedy Nan. Let's sup before we go. Hush your bye, baby, on the treetop. When the wind breaks, when the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. Down will come baby, cradle and all. rock a -bye, baby, thy cradle is green. Father's a nobleman, mother's a queen. And Betty's a lady who wears a gold ring. And Johnny's a drummer and drums for the king. The end. Well, as you can see, nursery rhymes don't necessarily make up an entire story like some of our books do, 
but I hope you got a nice sampling of some of the very traditional nursery rhymes that are out there. Our last book we're going to be reading today is called Jack B. Ninja. It's a little bit of a sillier take on a traditional nursery rhyme called Jack B. Nimble. It's written by Tim McKenna and illustrated by Stephen Savage. And if you like the illustrations in this one, Stephen Savage has actually illustrated quite a few picture books that we have here in the library. Jack be ninja. Jack be quick. Jack, jump over the bamboo stick. Secret mission starts tonight. Hide in shadow out of sight. Jack be ninja way up high watches as the guards go by. Waits until the coast is clear, never shows a hint of fear. Jack B. Ninja keeps his cool, dips into the garden pool, takes a breath and dives below, spots a tunnel. Go Jack, go! Jack B. Ninja, bold and brave, breaks into a bandit cave. Tiptoe searching through the dark, makes no sound and leaves no mark. Jack B. Ninja on his quest finds the stolen treasure chest. Swipes the loot and jumps the gap, trips a wire, springs a trap. Jack B. Ninja slightly stuck, needs a little bit of luck. Eek! Here comes the bandit crew. Grappling hook and rope will do. Jack B. Ninja must work fast, dodges leaps, escapes at last. Brings the prize to Ninja Master, could have been a little faster. Jack B. Ninja, job well done, says the master to his son. Take a look around for me. Jack obeys. What does he see? Jack B. Ninja jumps with fright. <gasps> look out, bandits! Now we fight. Jack, don't worry, Mama cries. We're your family in disguise. Jack B. Ninja hugs each one. Thank you for the ninja fun. Time for cake, they clap and shout. Light the candles, <sighs> blow them out. Jack B. Ninja flips and kicks, cartwheels over the candlesticks. All the ninjas dance and cheer. Then, like that, they disappear. Well, I hope you liked all of our nursery rhyme books, some sillier than others, some more traditional than others. And now I'm going to step aside and let Rachel come up and tell you about our craft for this week. Hi friends, this week we are making a spider craft, either from Little Miss Muffet or the Itsy Bitsy Spider, you can think of it as either one. Our first craft is the curbside craft, which is a climbing spider. So you'll get four popsicle sticks and um, they're just regular wood color, so I colored them black. And then I glued two googly eyes on there, even though spiders have lots of eyes. And then for his legs, they're kind of tricky, but you'll get four half pipe cleaners. You'll take two of them, put them together like this, like a T, and then you can cross one over and cross the other over and move it so that it's all on one side so that you can put it on one of his sides like this and then you'll do the same for the other side. And then on the back, you'll have two tiny straw pieces. You can put those on the back so that that's where the string will go through. I found it easiest to tape those straw pieces on. Um, and then you can, you'll have a piece of string that's pretty long, so you can take that and then just loop it through the straw pieces and then you can tie it. You might need help tying that from a grown up. Tie it at the top and then you can put him on a doorknob and pull the strings and it looks like he's climbing. And then for your printable option, we've got this spider with accordion legs. So you'll get a, you'll print out a sheet 
that looks like this. You'll have his circle body, his mouth, two eyes, and then eight legs here. So I colored everything black, and then I colored his mouth red. I cut it all out, and then I glued his two eyes on in his mouth, and then for the legs, I took each strip and I folded them like an accordion, and then I glued it on the back, and then when you let go, he has like curly legs. So those are your two options, and we hope you enjoyed story time this week. We'll see you next time.